channel. My name is Jamie and I make cleaning, organizing, and military lifestyle content every Sunday and Wednesday. And in today's video, I'm going to be discussing the things that you might be wondering if you should bring with you on an OCONUS military move. So overseas and specifically to Germany and even more specifically to USAG Bavaria. I have and of course, if you have other points that I haven't thought of or I haven't answered for you, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Should it stay or should I bring it? And I just wanna disclaim that these are just all my opinions and my personal experiences. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, I will have been here three years and we are still gonna be here for about eight more months. So um, the first topic that I'm gonna to touch on is big furniture. For example, sectionals and king size sets. Should you bring it to Germany? Should you bring it to Bavaria? So I've got a lot of notes here on my iPad so that I don't ramble too much and that I touch on everything. So I'm going to be referring to those a lot. Um, obviously not all, all houses come in the same sizes, but I can say if you're going to be moving to Bavaria, I personally have never seen a home, no matter the size, that couldn't fit a king size bed or a large sectional. Now that's not to say that some homes won't fit them more comfortably than other homes. But I would say that if you already own a king size bed or a sectional to bring them, it will fit. It will work in your housing. I know that like when people talk about European housing, that it tends to be on the smaller size. And that is true. However, military housing is accommodating to Americans and American families and what American size families are used to. So if you see my house tour, which I'll link up above, um, my bedroom and my living room are both fairly large spaces. I personally have a queen size bed. That's not to say that a king size bed couldn't fit in my room because it definitely could. Um, something else to consider is like headboards though because um, on second levels in German homes, at least off post, I'm trying to think if on post they have the same issue. I don't feel like they do. But off post um, in Bavaria, a lot of the ceilings are slanted on second and third levels. Big bulky furniture like headboards aren't necessarily gonna work the best, but obviously, I still wouldn't leave it behind. That's not something that's worth storing because you'll just either make do or put it in like another room for storage or something. So it's not a huge inconvenience, a headboard, but I wouldn't go out and purchase a huge new bed set or anything like that because of the slanted ceilings, not because of the size of your room. And just because of the layout, um, we have radiators for our heating. And so those are something not something that if you put something against it, it will burn, but it's definitely not really something you want to cover in your rooms and your spaces. If you can help it, I wouldn't bring a box spring that's a king size unless it's split in two, but that's kind of just like solid advice for anyone who lives a lot, not necessarily to a German home, but to any home, um, because getting a huge box spring on a second level is going to be hard for any house. Um, as far as like purchasing things over here, I would go to like Ikea or to Ikea's website, even in America, and look at their the type of furniture they have, like size-wise, um, quality-wise, and style-wise, that's a lot of what you're going to find in Germany at multiple stores. Of course, they have Ikea over here and everything is pretty much identical, but a lot of the other furniture stores are also really similar to Ikea size prices, qualities, sizes, style. I would say the more modern and definitely like smaller um, furniture is pretty typical over here in Germany. There's also the exchange that you can purchase furniture from. Um, it's going to be like Ashley Furniture and anything that you would see in the exchange or the PX over in America. It's also available over here, but you usually have to order it. And so then it might take a couple of months to arrive here, which is obviously plausible, but if you're looking to get furniture quick, it's going to be more like Ikea furniture here in Germany. Same with bed sizes. You can, of course, purchase a bed in Germany, but if you're looking for American standard sizes, you are going to have to purchase from the PX. That's the only place you're going to get an American standard bed. Otherwise, you're going to have to get a European standard bed, which the sizes aren't that different, but you're going to have trouble finding like sheets and headboards and things like that when you move back to America. I don't think it's that drastically different, but it's definitely something to consider when buying a European bed, as well as European beds, I think, are tougher, I don't know, tougher, firmer. They're not as plush as American size beds, which for safety reasons is definitely better, but for comfort reasons might be something to consider if you're thinking you're going to purchase a bed in Europe. All to say, if you have a bed, a bedroom set, large furniture, like sectionals and stuff, bring them with you. Don't store them. American houses in Germany, which you'll likely get, 
are all going to be big enough to accommodate your furniture. Right. Another huge question that people want to know, so number two, is should you or should you not bring your vehicle to Germany? And I would say that if you have a vehicle that is well maintained and it's a good family vehicle, it's good for you, it works for you in the US and it's not an F-350 truck, I would bring it. And that's not to say that people who have F-350 trucks don't also bring them because I'm pretty sure my neighbor has a F-250 or an F-350. It's huge and they still make it work in Germany. It's not something I would suggest bringing if you have an alternative, but of course, all American vehicles are allowed here. The roads are definitely more narrow. Parking is narrow. Parking structures in big cities are narrow. So it's not something you're gonna enjoy driving in the big cities, but as far as like to and from work, anything will work in Bavaria. You'd have to pass tests to get your car registered. So I wouldn't bring like a beater over here or anything that doesn't have working parts on it, but you will probably have had to pass the same inspections just to ship your car. So if your car is good enough to ship, it's definitely good enough to pass an inspection here in Germany and it's good enough to drive in Europe. Um, and your first car ships free, so there's no reason not to bring a first car. I would even consider bringing a second car if you also have a car that's in con good condition and that you think is affordable for your family and a good family car and you are dual military or you already know that the second adult in your home is gonna need a second car, whether they're gonna have a job or you have like a ton of kids. Not having a second car is not an option. It might even be worth it to look into um, shipping a second car. Um, if you're willing to look at cars in Germany, you can of course purchase cars here as well. There's American dealerships outside of all the bases and I say American dealerships because you're not going to want to buy a brand new or like new car that is European spec unless you plan on buying and reselling all in three years, which definitely is something to look into if you plan on dri driving or having your second car be like a beater car or like a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars and just something you can turn around and quickly resell. Those are definitely available and you could definitely buy a German car if you were doing that, but if you're going to come out here and buy a brand new SUV or something like that, you're going to want to buy the American spec and to put it simply, that just is like a car that's in miles per hour before anyone comes from you in the comments there has different things with headlights and quality and other, there's other details that specify something as European spec versus American spec, but the biggest and most obvious that Thing is that the speedometer is in kilometers versus miles per hour. And also if you're going to look into getting a beater car and that's going to be your option for a second car um, to get the best options or the best prices or the most options, it's going to be um, a manual car just because that's what Europeans drive. So if you can't drive a manual, wouldn't depend on your second car being a beater car or your first car, especially being a beater car if no one in your family can drive a manual. Like I said though, it's definitely an option to buy a car when you get here. We did not ship a car to Germany. Um, my husband's car wasn't a car that we were gonna bring overseas. It wasn't the best quality. It was definitely a car we were looking to resell anyway. And my car was on a lease, so I had to turn it in because most leaseholders, like almost all of them will not let you ship a car overseas if it's on a lease. And even some lenders, which means you purchase your car but you're paying on it to a lender, um, don't let you ship your car overseas, specifically if you've been paying on your lien for less than a year. So it's definitely something you want to check with your lender or leaseholder to make sure that you can ship your car over if that is your plan. And if for some reason the car that you own, the lender won't let you ship your car, which most do, but some, there is a few that do not, um, especially again, if you've had it for less than a year refinancing with, I think, maybe federal or definitely USAA, they will for sure let you ship your car if you refinance with them. So that's something to consider if you are running into trouble with your lender, but like the shipping companies won't ship it without a letter from your leaseholder or lender saying that you can ship it. So, so yes, all to say that if you have a car and it's not a giant F-350 and it's in good working condition and it's your reliable car in the States, there's absolutely no reason it cannot be a reliable car in Germany. Number three, should you bring your outdoor things? So this is going to vary largely on what type of house you get, which I know you can't control and you can't predict. Though I think you can predict it a little bit and I'm going to give you some tips depending on your family size. You're either going to get a multi-level townhome, whether that be off post or on post, or you're gonna get what you'll see referred to in 
forms as stairwell housing and that's just an apartment. Those are both homes that are available on post and off post and um, as I've mentioned in previous videos about USAG Bavaria so that's the Grafendeer, Velsec, Garmisch, or Hohenfels if you're coming to any of those bases. There's mandatory assignment to government housing which doesn't necessarily mean that you'll live on base so don't start panicking but it does mean you'll be assigned to government housing so that just means that the American government has leased single homes, groups of homes, groups of apartments, groups of townhomes on post and off post um, from Germans and Americans are residing in them. For townhome style, you will have a yard, a fenced in yard, but if you're an apartment style, you won't have a yard. So that obviously would contribute to whether you wanted to bring things like trampolines or grills or patio furniture. A lot of the stairwell housing will have like a little porch, but it's not very big. So a grill would definitely fit, maybe a little bit of a patio set, but not much. I definitely wouldn't go purchase a patio set. I wouldn't purchase a grill. If it's not in great condition, I wouldn't ship it. If you have a super large family, you can probably bank on having a sterile housing and apartment. And I know that sounds kind of backwards, but I think anything bigger than a four bedroom, so I think a five bedroom is all an apartment layout because it can just I don't know, that's just the way they design them. They're really big and German homes don't have that many bedrooms. Um, I know you can like opt to live in a smaller home and have four bedrooms and live in a townhome. I know families have done that. So if that's something you're really adamant on and having a yard, which if you had a family that big, I would kind of suspect that you would want um, to have a yard. But I think if you're gonna be in a town style, townhouse style home, four bedrooms is your max. Yes, so also if you are a single family, like you have one kid or no kids, you'll likely be an apartment. And that's just like the rule. There's obviously exceptions. I'm an exception. I am, it's just my husband and I, and we live in a townhouse, townhome style home, but we are definitely the exception, not the rule. So if you have a small family, three people or less, an apartment style home is likely. You have like four or five people in your family, um, that's like the sweet spot you're probably very likely to get a townhome. One of the biggest reasons I would say not to bring nice yard things with you is it's going to be really hard to bring them back and that's just because um, customs in America is a little bit tougher than customs in Germany so it's going to be easier to ship things to Germany but it's going to be harder to ship things back like trampolines, grills, patio sets. Um, customs just doesn't want those things back. They don't want soil and bugs and things like that jumping from continent to continent, which is totally understandable. So if there's any rust on your grill, it's going to be a no-go. If there's rust or damage to your trampoline, it's going to be a no-go. Play sets, things like that. Um, grills are almost always a no. Fire pits are almost always a no. People definitely are turning around and reselling those things. Um, on the pages. So if it's things you don't already own, for sure don't purchase them and just plan on buying them here and turning around and reselling them to families that are PCSing. Whether that be that you buy them new or used from other families who are doing the same thing, there's always good patio furniture for sale. There's always good fire pits for sale. There's always trampolines for sale. All of that stuff is constantly rotating because families aren't here long. So it's all gently used and it's always super affordable. So just plan on buying it here from families and reselling it before you leave. I know a lot of the husbands specifically are going to be like, should I bring my tools? Should I bring my lawnmower? Should I bring my snowblower? For sure, no snowblower. I mean, if it snows a ton that one winter that you're here two days and you're mad at me for saying that, I'm going to say right now, these are just my opinions, but a snowblower would definitely be not necessary. We have small yards, so like your extreme, super great lawnmower and stuff is definitely not necessary. We tried German lawnmowers, which are not gas operated, didn't love them, but um, I've never lived on post before, so I don't know if this is an Oconus military um, accommodation or just an on post housing accommodation, but we have this place called Self Help where you can rent any of the tools that you might need. Um, we've had a lawnmower rented from Self Help for the entire three years that we've been here. We can get a weed whacker anytime we'd like to use it, um, a leaf blower anytime we'd like to use it. Um, power washers. There's definitely people here who've brought those things and they find them useful, but that's because they've ended up in townhomes. It's just added weight. It depends if you're close in weight or not, whether you bring these things. If you're not worried about your weight at all when you're shipping things, I guess bring them. Even if you live in an apartment, you're going to have like a storage room in the basement of your apartment building where you can store all these things if they end up not being useful. But of course, as you can imagine, 
a weed whacker and a leaf blower and a saw are not going to be that useful if you end up living in an apartment. So all to say that any outdoor things you choose to bring, keep in mind that you might not have a yard. It's like a 50-50% chance if you're going to have a yard or not. There's nothing you can really do to control that factor. Um, but if you are somebody or a family that enjoys spending time outside, there's always a rotation of outdoor patio and outdoor furniture and things that you can buy from outgoing families and resell to incoming families. All right, so number four, appliances. So I would have to say, under no circumstance can I think of a reason you would bring your American washer or dryer or dishwasher or refrigerator or freezer to Germany. All of those things are provided for you here in your military housing. Even if you're that 1% that gets non-government non housing in Bavaria, those things will still be provided to you from housing. You will not have to go out and purchase a refrigerator, a washer, a dryer, none of that. All those things will be provided to you. Granted that you are military. DOD? I don't know nothing about that, sorry. Same for me goes for um, American microwave. Some people would disagree, but I probably wouldn't bring an American microwave just because it uses a lot of electricity, a motor, wattage. Let me just get into the electri electricity of housing. If you haven't watched any of my previous videos, if you are moving to Bavaria, again, not just Germany, but specifically Bavaria, you are probably going to live in government leased housing. All government leased housing has American outlets and German outlets, which means they have 220 volt capabilities and 110 volt capabilities. So that means you can plug in your American appliances and you can plug in your German appliances. Keep in mind that Germany is still running on 220 volts of electricity. So everything is 220 volts, but American housing, they have built in transformers. So they have transformers, which sometimes are little boxes that you set around your house that you plug in your American things so that it will convert the energy down to 120 volts so it doesn't burn out your products or your machines or your motors. Um, but in American housing, they put them into the walls and in every room, at least on one wall, they will have at least one American outlet. So they have at least one transformer built into every room so you can plug in your American appliances. Now keep in mind that over time, even a transformer is hard on your products. So plugging in things that use a lot of electricity and a lot of constant running of the motors is going to wear on your products. Whether there's proof of it or not, whether you personally experience this or not, it's happening. So um, things with motors that I wouldn't use on a constant day-to-day -day basis with 110 volt would be like a vacuum cleaner. However, I do use my vacuum cleaner and I knew that I was going to have to replace my vacuum cleaner almost immediately after we moved here. I broke it. Well, I didn't break it. My neighbor broke it. Friendly military problems. Um, and I was like, well, I'm not going to purchase a German one because this one still works. It's just like got some structural damage, but I'm not going to purchase an American one because it's going to be hard on my motor. So vacuum cleaners, um, microwaves, blenders, KitchenAids, anything like that with big motors that's gonna be run constantly. You can plug those all in here and you can use them, but if you have anything that's like super valuable or super special to you, it might not be something that you wanna plug in constantly. We have an American blender, we use it maybe a couple times a month, no problem. Um, do I think it's wearing on my product? Possibly, but it's not something we use daily, so it wasn't something I was gonna replace with a German product. Our microwave, we definitely use it many times a day, so I replaced it with an Amer or with a German version. But I wouldn't come here and purchase, personally, opinions, opinions don't come for me, I wouldn't purchase brand new American appliances before moving to Germany or in Germany, which you can get 220 and 110 at the PX, so you could purchase a brand new American vacuum if you wanted to. But also, if you're watching this video and you're not coming to Bavaria, the chances of you living off post in like the Kaiserslautern area, for example, which is like one of the hugest military communities in Germany, the chances of you living off post are much higher and you will not necessarily or probably unlikely at all to have American plugins. So you either have to buy a little transformer box to plug in things when you want to use them or you'll have to buy all... German appliances, which hopefully, especially in that area, just like I previously said with outdoor furniture, is a more common thing over there. So there's probably a lot of 
um, outgoing families that you can buy from and incoming families that you can sell to. Just to go back to the big appliances like washers, dryers, freezers, refrigerators, I don't think that you could successfully constantly run something that large on a transformer. I think it would ruin your transformer or it would ruin your appliance in the long run. Again, just my opinions. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an electrician. But I don't know anybody who has big American appliances like that and run them here successfully. Also, I can't imagine the weight that that would add in all of those things are provided to you by military housing. If you want me to go more in depth in the comments or another video on the voltage differences, the 110 and the 220, it's truly not that complicated. Let me just show you an example. I thought all you needed for everything you wanted to plug in in Germany would be one of these, which this is what the European plugins look like. And then it's got a spot for your American plugin. So I thought anything I want that's American, I plug into this and then I plug this into the wall and voila, it works. But that only works if your appliance is dual voltage, which means it can run on anything from 100 volts to 250 volts usually. Anything in between can be plugged into anything in Germany, anything in America, and voltage wise, it would do just fine. Now things in your life that are probably dual volt voltage are your electronics. So your computer charger, I plug that into this. I plug in my phone charger, plug it straight into the wall, no problem. Um, some other common things that are dual voltage, dual voltage are things like your television. Um, I plug that, I plug my te television into this, plug this into the wall, no problem. A lot of bigger brands, I have a Qi hair straightener, that's dual voltage, I plug that into this, plug this into the wall, no problem. But something bigger, especially with a motor, like my Ninja Blender, if I plugged my Ninja Blender or my vacuum into this and plugged this into the wall, it would blow. And not just blow the circuit, but it would ruin, more, like, more than likely, it would ruin my vacuum cleaner or ruin my Ninja. That I need to plug into a metal box, a transformer, which I don't own because we have transformers built into our home. Um, I would need to plug that into a transformer and the transformer into the wall and this little electric box is gonna convert the energy down to 110. Just keep that in mind, make sure your products are dual voltage if you're gonna plug them into an adapter and plug them into a wall. This is an adapter. A transformer is much bigger and converts the entire energy output. And number five, and this goes along with electricity. I'm just gonna be forthcoming. I don't know a lot on this topic. It kind of bo it boggles my mind, to be honest, but, and it needs its own category because it boggles my mind, but these are lights and lamps, so, Ideally, from the minimal research that I've done, if you got an American lamp and plugged it into an adapter and plugged it into the wall, I believe, and simply changed the light bulb, which I believe American light bulbs, I could be wrong and I could be backwards, but I believe American light bulbs run on 60 hertz and German light bulbs run on 50 hertz. So ideally, if you just change the light bulb, your lamps should work just fine. I don't, I do have American lamps, but I don't use them because I don't understand it. And we have lights in every room and it's just not that big of a deal. When you get me started on LED lights, I don't even know if that makes a difference. I have no idea. Um, but lamps and lights, I would definitely do your research before I would bring big lights or purchase lights. I probably just wouldn't purchase lights and I probably wouldn't deal with, deal with it. Um, again, I don't know if it's like something to do with this is just like the longest place I've ever lived somewhere or if it has something to do with the Hertz or it has something to do with German light bulbs, but I changed light bulbs more in this house than I've ever changed light bulbs in my life. I've tried American light bulbs in case I'm just like not understanding the electricity in my house. I tried German light bulbs. My light bulbs burn out a lot. I don't know if it's because I have such a huge house that I just didn't even notice how many lights are in a house and how often lights need to be changed, but I change friggin' light bulbs all the time. That's another thing that's provided by self-help, like I referred to earlier, and you can just take your burnt out light bulbs, bring them to self-help and trade them in for other light bulbs. So it's not like a financial burden for me to do this. It's just more like curiosity, like I just don't understand it. And I know that American lights won't work here for long because I have American Christmas lights. Um, so the first Christmas I plugged in my American lights and throughout the Christmas season, bulbs burnt out. And I've never had my American Christmas lights burn out before. It's just like, I know they do, but it's never been an issue for me. And I'm telling you like half my tree was no longer lit. I still use them. I still just like replace the bulbs or like, I've opened more boxes because I, for some reason, had a outrageous amount of American Christmas lights and they worked just fine for me for the last three years, but that's the only lights I've ever tried to plug in and figure out. Because they're American lights and they're 60 hertz, they do burn out over time. It's not like an immediate explosion. Like I've one time I plugged in my vacuum cleaner into one of these because it was on a long extension cord and I wasn't paying attention to where everything 
was plugged in, etc. because I'm just dumb. And I, it didn't ruin my vacuum, but it completely, within seconds, it blew the fuse. So lights aren't quite as like a dramatic of a circumstance, but over time they definitely did burn out. So lights, I don't really understand them. I don't really understand Hertz. I don't really understand clocks either. I know like American clocks, if you were to plug them in here, they'd get kind of messed up. I know like the clock on my um, coffee is always off. And again, that has something to do with Hertz. Lots of Hertz. I don't even know why I'm making a video about this. I'm apparently dumb. I don't know. Lights. I don't understand lights. 220 volts versus 110 volts. My mind can understand when you start adding Hertz and Watts. I can't. It's blowing my little science brain. So can you use American lights here? Maybe. Maybe if you switch the light bulb, I'm going to give you maybe, but I probably wouldn't bring a ton of them. I definitely wouldn't invest in them. And now I'm just going to touch on a few other miscellaneous things, um, random things I would have bought before moving to Germany had somebody told me. Random things I would have purchased in the States before moving to Germany if I would have been planning ahead. Um, any electronics you're considering. So phones, Amazon Echoes. I really wish I had an Amazon Echo. Um, a new computer, etc. Because of the batteries, it's hard to find I think it's lithium batteries. It's hard to find a place that will ship them overseas. So you're going to have two mailboxes, which I touched on in a different video. You're going to have an American PO box called your APO, and then you're going to have your German address. And so if you want to buy things from like a German website, like an Amazon from German Amazon, you're going to get a German Amazon Echo, which is going to have like a German plug. It might be in German. The directions are going to be in German. I mean, it might be easy to convert it to American once you move to the States. I don't really know because I don't have an Amazon Echo, but you're gonna buy a German one. And if you want an American one, which I assume that you do because eventually you'll move back to America, then you have to buy it from an American website and it has to be able to ship to your American PO box. And because of the batteries and because of the different ways that they ship, um, a lot of websites, they just take that option off. Like you cannot buy any, you cannot buy a computer or a camera or a razor, like an electric razor, um, anything like that with batteries, you cannot buy from like Amazon or Kohl's or Target. They just won't ship because it's an extra added step to ship those things, to ship batteries um, through customs and they don't want to be bothered with it. So they don't allow it. You can ship these things to your PO box, however. So if you were to purchase it, send it to like a family member and your family member wanted to take the extra step at customs to make sure that you could safely ship the battery to you. It's definitely an option. But it's an added step, it's an inconvenience. So if you're looking on making those purchases anyway, purchase them before you get here. Another thing that I wish that we had purchased more of, and I have since purchased more of them, like I purchased them when I was in America, put them in my suitcase and brought them with me. That's how much I needed it, um, is American extension cords. I can't find American extension cords at any of like the military stores here. And I've been to like the big PXs all across Germany and I've never been able to find an American extension cord. But because we can plug American appliances in, in one spot in every room, sometimes that one spot is not the most convenient spot. And so I have a lot of extension cords in my house. So I can plug in American appliances where I want to plug them in. I have like a super small one that's in my kitchen that goes behind my stove because in one corner I have my coffee maker and in my other corner that's where I use my blender and my toaster if I have them out. And so I have an extension cord that goes behind my stove so that I can use those appliances in the opposite corner because there's only an American outlet in the corner with my coffee maker. So another thing I would suggest is fans. And the German fans, in my opinion, are not good. They're not, they're not powerful. I don't like German fans as well as they're very, very, very expensive and there's not a lot of selection. There's not a lot of variety. That's with anything in Europe that you're looking to purchase. There's not as much variety as we're used to in America. And so I'm, I'm kind of picky on what I want to spend my money on. So I want something that I like aesthetically, that I like the style of, that's in the price point I want, that's the quality I want. And I just can't really find that when it comes to fans in Germany. And so I wish I would have purchased a couple of more American fans before coming over here. And that's because there's no air conditioning in Germany. Flat out, I can get more into it, but there is no air conditioning in Germany can't have air conditioning in Germany. You can buy like standing air conditioning units. Don't buy those in America. Um, don't buy window air conditioning. The windows in Germany don't work like that and you won't be able to use a window air conditioner. And if you bought, for some reason, if you found a standing air conditioner, which may or may not exist in America, I don't know, the power of those is way too strong to have an American one and be run on a 
transformer. I don't think that would work long term. So if you are desperate for an air conditioner, you're going to have to purchase a German air conditioner. Two other things that I wish I would have pre um, purchased before moving here, and I'm just going to throw these together because this is getting long, um, large area rugs and decor. Um, I just enjoy decorating my house and I like decor and we have a lot of wood floors and a lot of big open space and I wish I had large area rugs to go in them. But all to sum up that I don't think that Germany has a lot of options. So I want something that I like the style of, that's in the price point that I want and the quality that I want and I'm not finding all three of those things in a lot of varieties. If you don't have any area rugs now, I might consider at least purchasing one that fits to the size of your living room set for for when you move to Europe so that you know that you're getting the quality that you want, the style that you want, at the price point that you want. Um, and then another thing that I find difficult to get here is sheets and bedding. A lot of bedding doesn't ship, including sheets, but also like big um, duvets and big comforters and stuff like that won't ship to your American P.O. box just because of the size or like if it's, for some, if it's like real down, it's not gonna ship it's animal product and so if you need things like bedding or sheets you're going to want to purchase those before you move here otherwise you're going to be stuck with what is available to ship or at the px because again bed sizes aren't the same so it's not going to be as easy to just go in on the german economy and buy yourself sheets you could probably make them work but they're not going to be as perfectly fit to your bed um new shoes is another thing that i would purchase in the states if you're looking on getting a certain type of shoe if you know the next season is coming up and you need new shoes for that season or your kids are going to need new school shoes or your husband goes through running shoes every six months and is picky about his shoes it'll be something that you're going to want to purchase before you come in my opinion because you'll either be stuck with what's at the px which is to their price point which is usually overpriced and their styles which is limited German economy, I personally think all their shoes are overpriced. Whether you convert it or not, I think all German shoes are overpriced in my opinion. And you'll have to deal with trying to figure out European to American shoe size, which isn't like the hardest thing in the world, but it's definitely an inconvenience. And if you wanna ship from America, you gotta try them on. So you're gonna ship to you, try them on. They might be too wide, too short. It's just one of those things that people are picky on how they fit. So if you know you're gonna need shoes, obviously you're gonna need shoes while you're here, but if you're just like right about to start a new school season or a new the new winter season's coming and you need new boots or your husband's gonna need a couple pairs of running shoes while he's here, it might be something that you consider investing in before you move here. I know not everybody can go out and buy like eight new pairs of shoes, but if you can buy a couple pairs of shoes or it's that time to buy shoes anyway, do before you get here, you're not gonna regret it. <laughs> And then baby furniture, baby beds, baby cribs, baby crib mattress, mattresses, things like that on American standard size and European standard size. Now, if your baby's going to be a tiny little baby that needs a crib for the entire time that they're in Germany, a German standard size might be okay. But if you're going to have babies or have more children or your child's still going to need a crib when they go back and forth between America or they have an American crib now, again, American, or American standard crib sheets versus German standard crib sheets, etc. Like American style more than you like German style. Those are things that are hard to ship. It's hard to ship big bulky furniture items. And something that people don't plan ahead for is children. Obviously, you can't really plan ahead for that. But if you're pregnant now and you're like, ooh, I'm baby furniture, but we're like only 10 weeks along or something, I don't know. I would get baby furniture before moving here if you're having kids or you've started having kids and there's things that you're gonna need to invest in while you're in Germany might be something you consider buying before Germany. And I'm just gonna touch on this. That's the same thing with car seats. There's um, German standard car seats, which you cannot use a German standard car seat in America. So your converted car seat, if you have this tiny little infant or a tiny little baby, but you know you want one of those car seats that converts from infant to older, but you're just gonna wait a couple months because you can't afford one now. It's gonna be something you're gonna wanna purchase in America or you're gonna be stuck to what's at the PX. They're not gonna grow out of this car seat by the time they get back to America they need an American standard car seat. Now you can use your American standard car seat in Germany because um, with our American cars and our European um, American military license, it allows us in, it's part of our like visa agreement that we can use our American standard car seats, but you're not gonna be able to use a European car seat in America. Hope all that babbling made sense. All to say, I don't think anything I said has hard and fast rules. It's dependent on you as a family, your personal preference. Keep in mind that you may like your options on the economy. I know people who absolutely love styles and prices. They've made huge, big purchases in Germany that they absolutely love. Um, big purchases at a lot of the stores. You can fill out some quick paperwork and it's all tax 
free. We don't pay German taxes. If you can get your tax your taxes back on that, and so then people find things that they think are more affordable than America. That hasn't been my experience, but that's not to say it won't be yours. Um, there are definitely people who disagree with me. They're like, oh, you don't need rugs, you don't need lamps, you don't need <laughs> fans, all these things you can buy in Germany. And if you're like a totally chill person, go with the flow, buy whatever's available, not really worried about budgeting your life, then you might absolutely find that to be true. But I'm pretty picky on my style. I like things at an affordable price point. I like a good variety, so I find that shopping in America is so much easier and so much simpler than Germany. So there's a lot of things that um, I wish I would have bought before I got here and a lot of things we've just simply done without in the three years that we've been here because I just refuse to make the purchases in Germany knowing that I can find better what I want at a better price point in America. We don't have a bedroom set, we don't have a TV stand, I need a mini vacuum, there's just so many things that I'm waiting to purchase when we go back to America. One, because it will be um, an American appliance or because it will be American quality at American prices with a variety of styles and options. At the very least, I hope I gave you some options and items to consider and think about when you're deciding what you want to pack and bring with you to Germany. Maybe it sparked some other things that I haven't brought up or things that you hadn't even thought about. Um, leave it down in the comments if I helped you with anything or if you have other things that I haven't even brought up or thought about. I'd like to give you my opinion and insight on those. Good luck with your Oconus move, whether it be to Germany or somewhere else. And I wish your family safe and happy travels. I really wanted to get it right